Wow. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and what a pleasure it is to be here with you at Web Summit. And even more of a pleasure to tell you about some of the work that we're doing, which is looking at how technology can be used to tackle one of the greatest and long-lasting and, quite frankly, most tragic challenges facing humanity. And that's the, the challenge of global hunger. And in fact, in 2017, to have hunger with us is incredibly tragic. When you consider 815 million people in the world do not have enough to eat. 815 million. That's one in nine of, the, uh, not one in nine of us on the planet do not get enough to eat on a daily basis. What are the reasons for that? Well, of course, you can guess some of them. Natural disaster, hurricanes, earthquakes, tropical storms, other things that displace people. They lose their livelihoods. They're unable to purchase or even find food. The same thing happens in conflict. And today we have the, most number, the highest number of displaced people since World War II. We have 60 to 65 million people displaced from their homes because of conflict. And when you're displaced from your home, you lose your livelihood. Sometimes you end up hungry because you can't find or purchase food. And then there's extreme poverty. When you are so poor that you cannot buy food in the market, and it's not even just a matter of quantity, it's also quality. So what is the nutrition level of the food that you're eating? And when you're a child in particular and you do not have the right nutrition, terrible things can happen. These children from the indigenous village of, uh, an indigenous village in, in northern Guatemala, you can see how tall they are compared to the international benchmark for nine, year old, nine years old. These, these are all nine-year-old children. They're not as tall because they've been stunted physically and probably they've been stunted mentally as well. And they will never recover from that. Hunger kills more people than HIV AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined. So, the World Food Program is an agency of the United Nations set up to address the problem of hunger and, and provide food assistance to people. So, we're active in over 80 countries of the world. We have 15,000 staff members. We reach between 80 and 100 million people a year with food assistance of some kind, and we have a massive physical supply chain so that at any one time we have 5,000 trucks, 70 aircraft, 20 ships on the high seas, shipping 3.5 million tons of food around the globe every year. And we have been very interested in how we can make our work better in, in reaching hungry people through the use of technology and innovation. And one of the things we did a few years ago is we looked at what we were doing and how we could make it better, and we looked to the tech industry, actually. And we said, how does the tech industry support new ideas? How does the tech industry really accelerate things? And we built a, an innovation accelerator in the World Food Program. We looked at, it's kind of like a Y Combinator. Y Combinator for ending hunger. And it does all the things that tech startup uh, accelerators would do. We have boot camps for promising new ideas. We have sprint programs for those that are reaching proof of concept. We can provide scale-up support, and we're also scanning the horizon for what's out there that's, that's new. And before I forget to say it, of those of you who, are have, who have startups, and you're in the audience, and you're interested in applying, I'll have some, uh, some information at the end of this presentation on how you can apply to the World Food Program's Innovation Accelerator, which is located in Munich, Germany, because we're looking for the best ideas out there. Okay, this talk was entitled Five Innovations, the uh, Five Tech-Based Solutions that Can Address World Hunger, so let's get into five of them that we're excited about. First one, unmanned aerial vehicles and AI platforms. Okay, so what's, this, what's the scenario? Something happens, shock hits, humanitarian crisis, we need to know what the situation is on the ground in order to reach people immediately. The faster you can do that, the better. So we've started flying drones already for several years now. We use drones, they collect images, we can look at the images, that's great. The problem is they gather so much data, and if your areas, affected areas are large, looking through all that data manually is very difficult. And it's the same with satellite imagery, by the way. So what we've started doing is looking at machine learning to help us read images automatically that can amplify the, 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 the human process of doing that and understand how many houses destroyed, how many roads blocked, uh, how can we reach people better. Understanding 
what people are facing in terms of food security situation is also incredibly important. And actually, believe it or not, until a few years ago, the only technology we had to do that was talking to people face to face with a, and having a pencil with paper in your hand. And with the increased mobile penetration in parts of the world that, that had never had reliable communication before, we're finding new ways of reaching people. So a few years ago, we started reaching people with SMS surveys, um, even sometimes live phone calls. But that's actually just the start, because we're now looking at AI-powered chatbots as a way of interacting with people and really getting more information from them, automating the, the collection, and really being able to hear and maximize the value of the hundreds of thousands or millions of voices of individuals who are affected by hunger. Blockchain. Okay, a lot of stuff about blockchain, and we are very interested in the potential of blockchain. I didn't mention it before, but the World Food Program, in addition to having a very large physical supply chain, has a very large financial supply chain. And that is because we don't just provide food for people. Where there are functioning markets, where there's a functioning retail industry, we're providing cash. In fact, this year so far, we provided over a billion dollars worth of cash entitlements to people. And that can come in the form of cash, it can be a digital voucher of some kind, it can be delivered on a card mechanism, it can be delivered on a mobile phone platform. And this woman, who's a uh, refugee from Syria based in Jordan, is receiving her entitlement with an iris scan. So it's biometrically linked. So the cash programs are big, they're growing in, in the World Food Program and the work we do with our partners. But to do that, we have to have relationships with financial service providers. We have to have a bank that we give names of people to, we have to advance money to, and so on. We've been experimenting with a blockchain to replace that piece of it. And we have a functioning blockchain with 10,000 refugees in the Azraq camp of Jordan who are getting paid in their digital vouchers on a monthly basis with a blockchain-based system. We're really excited about what blockchain will do uh, because we've been able to increase our efficiency, reduce the, the fees involved so that every dollar or Jordanian dinar that we can save in the transaction fees we can put toward giving to people. And we're also interested in the other applications, physical tracking of our, our uh, supply chain, looking at land tenure for uh, farmers, um, looking at identification systems and moving towards self-sovereign data for people. What would that mean for people to own their own data and, and have the access or control the access to their data. Another mobile-related uh, innovation, looking at how farmers who are, are trying to produce food in different, difficult rural areas, difficult to reach rural areas, how they're able to be able to access markets better. Because a lot of problems in sub-Saharan Africa and other parts of the world come from inefficiency of food systems. Markets are inefficient. And if we can help make the link more efficient, we can help put small farmers into touch directly with buyers on a digital platform so they don't have to take their food to a, a distant market in the hopes they're going to meet the right person who wants to purchase that. You can make that handshake, that, that transaction online, and they can take it there. This is a functioning project in Zambia. Um, we've had success so far in piloting this. It's, it's still uh, a work in progress, but we're really interested in the potential for how we can link farmers. Okay, another one that's based on mobile uh, platforms. The governments of the world who provide funding for us, they're very generous, but I've, I've, because of all the issues that I've just told you about, those, those donations to us are not sufficient to meet the needs of people. So we've been looking at how we can leverage new platforms such as smartphones as a way of reaching the crowd. So Share the Meal, which is pictured here, is an innovation that we've developed. It's, it's available in App Store and Google Play, um, every App Store around the world. I encourage you to go get it, of course. Uh, Share the Meal is a way that you can participate in ending hunger. You can provide a micro donation and share the meal enough to feed one child for one day, which is about 50 US cents, 40 euro cents. You can also provide enough for a week, a month, a year, etc. But this is really a way to try to leverage crowdfunding and mobile platforms and the, the smartphone penetration as, as technologies that we can really put toward the fight against hunger. Now, I've 
talked about things that exist right now. I've talked about things that are working in the field right now. And as much as excited as I am about them, what excites me even more is what's going to come next. Because if you look at what the fundamental trends are, the primordial elements out there, artificial intelligence. Oh, sorry, I, I have to. <laughs> artificial intelligence, um, universal connectivity, the Internet of Things, blockchain. I mean, these are fundamentally, uh, the, well, I, I don't have to tell you guys, these are game-changing, world-changing ideas and technologies. And so the question is, what's the next way that we can reach people that we haven't even imagined yet? And that's when I turn to you. Because the people in this room, as with all of your skills, all of your uh, access to technology, if, if we can find ways to take the world-leading technologies that are being developed for grocery delivery or whatever it is in San Francisco or, you know, th those kinds of things and bring it to people who need it the most, how can we find the models, the technologies that will benefit them? And that is my challenge to you. So please, as I said before, if you have a startup and you're working in an area that could be of, of uh, that you think could be applied to the fight against hunger and the things that I've talked about today, please feel free to contact us on, on the, the, um, the address and the, and the means here on the screen, and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear about what, uh, what you're working on and what is exciting you. Thank you very much.